Hey, it's Tyler with Lowbrow Customs. Uh, today we're gonna show you how to install a sprung solo seat on this Triumph. So going over some of the parts you need for the job, uh, these are, this is actually the first product Lowbrow ever made under our own brand. Uh, and they're well done solo seat spring perches. We've been doing these for, I don't know, over a decade, a long time, and have made and sold many of these. So these get welded to the cross tube on your bike and they support the seat springs for the seat. Uh, these also get a leather washer and come with a little cotter pin so your seat can't pop up when you hit a bump. But a uh, very simple product and does a great job. This is a lowbrow solo seat pivot. So we have half a dozen different styles of these. US made, stainless steel body, 3 16 thick and tumbled, it's a really nice finish. Custom shoulder bolt, that's all chrome, chrome hardware. This particular one is made specifically for 1963 to 1970 Triumphs, such as this one behind me. And it engages to the, the stock rear tank mount. And the nice thing, this will actually work with your stock Triumph gas tank because uh, it'll slip right on top of the gas tank mounting tab and then bolt through both. Or it can be used in a case like this where we're gonna have a custom gas tank on the bike. And this, uh, this pivot's aluminum. We also offer the same pivot with a black body. And then we have both bolt-on and coped weld-on versions. Uh, so basically a seat pivot for every type of bike you might need one for. The seat that we're mounting up on uh, Todd's Triumph here is a Rich Phillips solo seat, US made, really nice quality, leather covered on top and underneath. Uh, they've got a great shape to them with a nice kick in the rear so you're not sliding back when you're hitting the throttle. Uh, excellent seat, we've dealt with Rich Phillips seats for many years. Uh, and also uh, there's a set of Lowbrow Customs three inch chrome barrel springs on the seat here. We just kind of uh, tightened up ahead of time. And uh, we've got these springs in barrel and hairpin style in a variety of lengths and in black as well as chrome. All right, I'll show you uh, how to get the seat installed. All right, in preparation for getting the seat all mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and simply put the pivot bracket in place on the seat. What we're gonna do is, this, this is a pretty straightforward job, especially with this bolt-on front pivot. But we are going to bolt the front pivot in place and can use the seat to line up exactly where the seat spring mounts go. These pivots have quite a bit of adjustability in the slots. For right now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I drop the pivot on there, I'll throw a washer on there, and loosely thread the nuts in place. I wanna leave it loose enough that I can still slide the bracket and uh, get it located so the springs are and seat are all at the right angle. One thing I uh, wanna mention in regards only to this bolt-on Triumph style seat pivot, this is the rear gas tank mount. Stock threads in that uh, are 5 16 26, which is a Whitworth thread. You have two options. So you can use a standard Whitworth 5 16 26 Whitworth bolt to mount this. Um, or you can do what we've done here, which is simply tap that hole out to a 5 16 24, which is a SAE, a st well, standard fine thread. And that allows you to just go to the hardware store and get a fine thread Allen head bolt and mount it in place. So if you, uh, you don't wanna change the threads on that stock mounting point, you can source yourself a Whitworth bolt. Either way works just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this pivot up. Now in final assembly, I would throw some blue Loctite on any and all threads you're tightening up. But for this purpose, it'll be just fine. Just looking to make sure that the pivot is in line with the backbone of the frame. All right, so you can see, uh, you know, our seat is sliding on that pivot nicely.
And the cope on the seat spring bungs is such that you can basically just set it in place. One thing worth mentioning on coil style or barrel style seat springs, because of the way they're made and they're coiled and then cut off, uh, if you rotate them, it'll index them a little differently, typically to make them go in a little wider or, or narrower at the base. And so right now, looking at this, the springs are a little wide because it's, it's uh, making it so the seat spring perches would have to be on the outside frame rail, which I don't want to do. I want to keep it on the seat cross tube. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen the nuts that are holding these seat springs in place to allow me to rotate them and see if I can bring them in slightly narrower. And this varies, of course, based on what seat you're running, what the spacing is between the studs. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of variations depending on what brand parts you're using. I'm just showing you one way to do it. Let's see where this gets us. So that worked just fine. Again, by uh, rotating those springs and just, just eyeballing it, I could see that rotating and brought, brought them in very slightly. And that will allow these seat spring mounts to uh, sit right there at the edge of the cross member, which is where I want them. So the next thing I'm going to do is eyeball where the seat is in relation to the seat pivot, front to rear, so those springs are, are vertically aligned. And then I'm gonna go ahead and snug up one of the nuts holding the seat pivot to the seat, so that won't slide any longer. And then it will be time to prep the tube for welding, mark where these go, and go ahead and tack weld them in place. So looking at this, and actually one thing you wanna pay attention to as well is how your bike is sitting. If it's on a lift, like this is on a little blackjack lift underneath the large lift it's sitting on, you wanna make sure that you're keeping that in mind and you don't make your, you know, weld something level, then step back and look at your bike and realize that the entire bike is not level. Okay. In this case, this uh, bracket's gonna be basically, uh, the seat's gonna be all the way to the rear of the adjustment slots and it's looking pretty good. One thing that is worth mentioning, uh, is if you're using a different pivot, a different lowbrow customs weld on or bolt on pivot, or uh, any solo seat pivot for that matter, it's typically gonna be easiest if you mount that pivot first. So if this was a weld on pivot, it would be pretty much the same process I've been going through, uh, except I would have cleaned the backbone, removed paint if there is any, got it centered so it is right uh, on the center line of that backbone, and then also determine kind of, you know, where that pivot needs to be, if it needs to be forward a little or back a little or whatever, and give it a few nice good tack welds, and then go ahead and move on to mounting the rest of the seat. And I say tack welds because you can always come back and finish weld the pivot when you're finished welding the seat spring mounts, but in case you realize you have to move that, it's way easier to break two tack welds and move it than to cut the whole dang thing off. Um, which is a mess. So almost no difference. Uh, this is very convenient in that it bolts to a existing location, but uh, doing a weld on pivot mount, uh, the overall job is almost the exact same otherwise. Right now what I'm gonna do is flip the seat out of the way and I'm gonna uh, prep this tube. I like using emery paper, emery tape. This you can find in the plumbing department of your local hardware store. And it's nice because it comes in a roll and you can simply rip off whatever piece you need. Another good reason to have that in place, you can just flip the seat out of the way very easily. But uh, what I'm gonna do is take this and quickly prep this tube to get any scale, rust, grease, you know, whatever off of there. It only takes a moment per side. Get in here to make sure I get anything from the uh, right near the, the weld here from this cross member to the frame. Good preparation will make your welds much, much nicer. 
make them look better, make them stronger, and make it uh, easier to do as well. And then I'm also going to go ahead and hit the edge of the weld on seat spring mounts just to make sure again that there's no machining oil on there, even though we're still gonna wipe this all down. Uh, no rust if they've been sitting around, no scale. You can also do this with a uh, die grinder with a little fine emery on there or scotch bright or whatever. But I'm just doing it the manual way since this is what I've already got handy. Mm, there is two. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe these down so they're clean and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring the seat back down and make a simple mark uh, to show where these need to be aligned. And then I will fire up the Lincoln Electric TIG welder and get them tacked in place. We'll go ahead and lower the seat back down into position. And the main thing I wanna do is mark the bungs so they are at the proper width. Uh, also, so I wanna see where they sit kind of naturally with the springs, but a little more importantly, I want them to be centered on that cross tube because I would personally be very annoyed if they weren't once I was done welding them. In the springs, you know, if they're, they'll, they'll work, they'll get over there even if they're not perfectly centered or you have to you know, pull them a slight amount. Uh, it's ideal if they're perfectly centered, but depending on the width of your frame, the size of your seat, where the studs are located, sometimes you gotta work with what you got. So it's pretty easy. And what I'm gonna do is just make a simple hash mark, a line from right on the bung right down onto the tube. It makes it really easy to match up, gives you a visual indicator for the side to side placement. And I'm gonna eyeball the bungs, make sure they're sitting vertical when I tack them. And um, if you want, you can make additional marks. This is the way I like to do it. So those are marked, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the seat out of the way, get the welder set up, and then go ahead and uh, tack weld these. One thing I decided to do just to take the extra two or three minutes and get the best fit is I ground the edge on each seat spring mount where it met the weld on the cross member. I did it on a belt sander. You could do that with like a flap disc on a handheld grinder, a Dremel, I mean, whatever you have, whatever you want to use. And that just gave a nice, tight fit there. I could have welded it on how it was, but I like taking the extra bit of time to get a really nice fit and a really nice weld on there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and line up my marker marks. Uh, eyeball, on my, personally I just like to eyeball, make sure this thing's vertical, uh, though you can get as intricate as you want as far as measuring and angle finders or whatever. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple tack, a little fusion tack welds to hold this in place, tack the other one, check my fitment, and then finish weld. Okay, first one looks good. On to the other side. Now I'm gonna to wanna to line these marker uh, marks up to check the width placement, but then I'm also gonna to want to get it visually straight, but also obviously I want it to match the same angle as the first mount. Just something to keep in mind.
Again, it's better to check and recheck. Way easier to uh, crack that tack off and move it if I need to now than later on once I've started using fill rod and welding more. But everything looks really good. Cool. Get my second tack on this side. And uh, now I will flip the seat back and there you go. I'd say that looks great. Looking from the rear, everything, the seat looks centered uh, in line with the backbone. You know, you gotta check kind of everything side to side. Just make sure you don't see anything weird. And if something's off, just stop, you know, backtrack a little bit and uh, do it the right way and you'll be happier with the finished product. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish weld these bungs and the seat will be mounted. All right, these are all finished welded and ready to go. They're still hot, but you can see our seat is now completely mounted up. Uh, the only thing left to do with finished mounting and when these aren't hot, is put the leather washers in place, you flip the seat down, put the cotter pins through, and uh, that's a wrap. Until next time, check out lowbrowcustoms.com for parts, tech tips, everything great that's motorcycle related. And if you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below. We're always working on great original content for you guys. Thank you. Yeah.